Who? Who? That is mighty fabulous. This is the best blaster of the year. I said it, it's out there. I fully believe that. This is the best blaster you can spend money on to buy this year. This thing is just magnificent. This is the Caliburn. If you have not seen it before, if you have not been watching on the channel, my love affair with this blaster over the last month and a half, I think at this point, of just messing around with it, playing with it, tweaking it, trying different things with it, it is, it's up there as one of my favorite blasters now. And it's just because there's so much uh, good here for what you're paying and what you're, you're getting out of it. And uh, I just, it took me a while to get this review out. I just wanted to spend so much time with this and I still didn't get to do all the things I wanted to do before bringing a review to you, but I felt uh, it was just time. It was time to talk about this in a complete setting where we review it and go over the pros and the cons of it. And uh, so let's, let's get right to it because I am excited to talk about this blaster. Oh, I love it. Um, clearly, it's likely going to get a good recommendation from me at the end of this video in case you hadn't figured that out yet. But we'll get to that later because there are a few cons. But first, let's talk about performance. Now, this is a fully homemade uh, with an asterisk, I would, I would say. This is a kit blaster that is sold and designed by Captain Slug. You can get them on Etsy from him, and uh, he sells them in three different varieties. You can get one that's just the hardware kit, which is just the metal bits and the screws and all that stuff, and this allows you to print your own 3D printed parts if you have access to a 3D printer, and that's like 60 bucks. Or you can build, or you can order a uh, build it kit uh, you know he sends you all the 3d printed parts all the hardware everything you need and for 110 dollars you put it together yourself which is what we did with this one and then he has fully assembled ones that he sells for 150 dollars and uh honestly it's well worth the money you get a lot you get a lot for what you're paying for these should be more expensive than they are um I honestly think Captain Slug just wants to get higher powered blasters in the hands of people to get them to experience what 200 FPS-ish games are like or blasters are like, which is what this hits with short darts and uh, the K26 that it comes with. Now, it does come with multiple springs. Uh, he sends you two. I got a K26 and a K25. The K26, depending on the dart type, gets anywhere from 180-ish to about 200-ish. Now, important to note, there have been revisions to this blaster, and there continue to be revisions, and we're going to talk about those a little bit later, but performance can potentially be even better based on what some people are saying. We'll talk about that again a little bit later. But this is the revision one, the original first 100 of these 3D printed blasters that he sent out. So it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that he has added since then. It does have one that we'll get into a little bit later again. But with uh, short darts, workers, and sweet oranges and things like that, you're looking at around 180 to 200 FPS range. And that is, that's solid. Like for something that you didn't have to go heavily into uh, building yourself and designing yourself, and it's not, you know, a, a dropping kit for a long shot, which you could spend just as much really trying to trick out a long shot as you would on a caliber and kit. And while you may get uh, a little bit better performance out of a long shot in terms of FPS with short length darts. Uh, this has the utility of being able to shoot full length and half length darts without changing anything. Without changing a single thing, I could load in a full length mag, shoot that off, load in a half length mag and shoot that off. No problems either way. And that is, well, that's just so cool to me. That, that extra bit of, of flexibility really adds a lot of value to this blaster. I mean, a lot of value. It cannot be overstated how nice that function is. Now, one thing I will talk about is for that power level of around that 200 FPS range, the barrel is a little short. 
Uh, so you, you, if you don't have a scar barrel or some sort of muzzle brake or, or porting of some kind to add onto this or a, a extra barrel length or whatnot, uh, you are going to have some accuracy issues with the darts just not being able to handle the power. Uh, I received some scar barrels from Heath and uh, I'll show some footage of the differences between what we're talking here. With the scar barrel from Heath and the Worker Gem 1 darts, I was able to hit targets of uh up to about 100 feet with pretty good accuracy and pretty good consistency once i pushed it out to about 125 feet is when the wind uh started really playing more of a role in the accuracy i was still within very good ranges of being able to hit a human sized target which was fantastic but it was important to note that you know at about that range is where i noticed some some you know of the accuracy starting to dip off a little bit but still very war worthy very fantastic and honestly this is the first time i have ever used a blaster that has made me think i need a sight i need i, I need to buy a sight for this so i can actually line things up because it's that consistent which was insane um i mean it literally it got to the point as well like i said with the wind being a factor at the 125 foot range also, the trigger pull became a factor. Like if I yanked on the trigger when I was uh, firing because of the, the tension, it would affect where the dart was going. And like the blast would move a little bit and the dart would go that little bit off, which again, it's just such a foreign concept to me as someone who's not been uh, heavily involved in the do-it-yourself or homemade branch of the Nerf hobby, but am now very interested in, which uh, it just... <laughs> I want to go to games now, higher powered games, which thankfully we're having some starting up here, the, uh, the boss games. But before I get too rambly about that, um, I do want to talk a little bit about the ergonomics. Um, it feels really good in hand. It feels, you know, comfy. I, I do kind of wish the stock was a little bit longer. I have long arms. So that's probably more so just for me than for other people or, or the masses as a whole. Uh, so I feel like I have to get a little bit tighter than I would like, but it's not, it's not uncomfortable. It's not atrocious. And I honestly probably could add a little bit of foam, extra foam back here if I really wanted to, to extend that another inch or two. Um, I do have one problem with the ergonomics and that is there's these little nubs for pins down here to hold the the parts together and when i'm priming i can actually kind of jam my thumb into that area and it can it can be unpleasant it can be unpleasant so i have almost started wanting to to wear a glove on my right hand or something along those lines put something there to kind of cover them up or something just to kind of alleviate that um but that may be something that's been fixed in one of the later revisions which again we'll talk about in just a little bit um, the pump grip is actually fairly comfortable. I, again, I have big hands, long arms, uh, so I can really get around it and get a nice, easy prime. Um, some people may not be able to. So some people may not find this as comfortable because I have big hands, long fingers that are able to really grip around things. Uh, the good thing is he does include Picatinny rail on the bottom here, which you can uh, you can take the, the guard off here and you can add like a, a vertical foregrip or an angled foregrip or something to give you a different priming method. And I have used one that has a angled, kind of a, a mishmash between what I would traditionally think of a vertical and an angled. It's like a 45 degree angle grip and it's actually pretty comfortable. So if you wanna print one of those off or buy a worker one, those are great options for this if you don't want to use the standard pump grip on it. Um, also, I do like that he concludes Picatinny right here up over the plunger tube and all of that. It is nice to be able to have that. I will use this to put my gimbal on for gameplay footage. Um, one bummer that I have is that I really wanted to put a sight right here, but it is, it, it's, it's just too close for me to really get in and, and feel comfortable using that sight right there. I am honestly thinking about trying to get one of those uh, Picatinny adapters that goes around a barrel and put it up here and kind of mount 
a, a site way at the front, which would be a little bit odd, but would allow me to comfortably use it if I can set it up right. So that is just a, something to take into consideration that this Picatinny rail does sit very close to you when you're actually using the blaster. Um, also, if you're using the K26, it can be a bit of a beefy prime over time and it may start to wear on you. I know, I know after shooting, I don't know, a hundred plus rounds through doing the uh, FPS chrono tests and all of that, I definitely felt it. My arm definitely felt it and that was like, okay, well, this is a little bit of a workout. So, you know, take that as a plus. But if you're in a game and this is all you brought, you may get tired out if you're not accustomed to that prime uh, over the course of that event. That being said, it's still more comfortable than I expected it to be for that prime. I got used to it fairly quickly and um, it just it, it it just feels good. It can feel a little bit crunchy at times, I will admit, if you don't keep things tightened and lubricated properly and all of that. It can get a little bit crunchy, but that's just one of those things that I think tells you it's time to do a little bit of maintenance on this. Now... I want to talk about the evolution of this blaster a little bit and the durability and things like that because um, they go hand in hand. Now, my particular blaster has had two pieces break on it uh, over the course of its short lifespan thus far. One was my fault, one was a blaster failure, uh, and one of them is still on the blaster, and that's the mag release here. If you watched my build video for this, you know that I broke this. No! There's a little small piece that I believe he has changed uh, since this has been made, or since this version has been out. Uh, but I was able to glue the piece back on, and since it's not under a high amount of pressure or stress or anything, it has worked fine. I'll have to place, replace it at some point, but it has functioned, which was great. The other thing that broke is this piece right here. And... Uh, because of that, the blaster was unable to catch. So no matter what I did, I would prime back and I'd get that nice sound like, okay, yeah, it's good. And then I'd let go and this would shoot forward and just slam forward. And it's like, okay, that's not good. So what had happened is, is this was meant to keep the bars, the rods here from bowing and it wasn't. So uh, Captain Slug went ahead and designed this piece right here that's connected to it and he's called this the pizza table piece because it kind of looks like a pizza table you get from a takeout pizza. Uh, and this helps distribute and keep things straight and in alignment. And that's great. Uh, and that prevents or hopefully prevents those kinds of issues from arising again. So kudos to him for doing that. And he did replace my broken part, which is great. Uh, he's been very good about that from what I've seen is if something goes wrong, he's on top of it, which is just that's fantastic customer service. It comes back and it looks great for him. Um, now for the evolution of this blaster, like I said, this is this is a R1, I wanna say, uh, blaster is before number 100. After number 100, this blaster changes a decent amount. It gets a new magwell that can natively accept katana mag adapters and some of the P-mags that people had slight issues with for the half darts at times. Uh, he also built an entire new grip assembly to make things easier. Basically everything he's changed is to make assembly and maintenance easier. So now if you're buying one now, you're getting something that's far easier to work with than this even, which is fairly easy to work with as it stands. I mean, I wouldn't mind having the newer version, don't get me wrong, because I mean, easier to work with, easier to maintain is always fantastic. But he's also done things like, there are now clear plunger tubes instead of the aluminum or metal right here. Um, he has a removable butt plate so you can easily swap springs without having to pop the blaster open in the middle. And it's just all kinds of cool stuff. And he's made some aesthetic changes if you want that, if you want something that looks a little more Alien Menace-like. Uh, he offers machined metal ramrods or uh, uh, yeah, rods and it just so many different options. And if you go with some of the upgraded kits, some of the, the upgraded seals or changes and things like that, I've heard that some of the FPS has actually gone up because of it. And that's awesome. If you're getting above 200 FPS, uh, I believe people are saying it's because the seal is better with some of the newer versions. So if you haven't bought one yet and you were thinking about it, it's even better now, which is really, really cool. 
and uh, makes me a little sad I don't have one of the new ones, but I'm totally okay with this because it's still a monster blaster for what you're paying. It looks cool, it feels good, and I'm just in love with it. I mean, I, I, feel, I almost feel like I'm maybe a little bit biased because I love this blaster so much, but it, it just seems so worth it to me. It seems like a good investment for my money and uh, the amount of power and flexibility you're getting for what you're paying is fantastic. And in my mind, in my opinion, keep in mind, this is my opinion, it is well worth the cons of this blaster. It well outweighs them. Things like, you know, concerns over 3D printing things, you know, sometimes break. Um, if they do, you're going to have to either print new parts or order new parts, replacements, in which time your blaster is unusable. Um, but the pros of that are that whenever he releases something to upgrade it or a new revision, you can buy those parts or you can print those parts and you can upgrade yours, which is, it's so cool. It's a platform that, that is continuously evolving and getting better. And that is so cool to me because this is introducing a whole group of people into higher and higher power games and blasters that previously did not maybe have access to them or have interest in them, but now because of how easy this is, are getting into it, are thinking this would be fun. I wanna use this. Where are their games? Can I start a game? And it's happened here. There's now going to be a higher power game here in the Bay Area and there hasn't been one here for years that I've been aware of. And that's really, really cool. Um, so in terms of is it worth it? Yes, 110 bucks. You could pay 150 for the pre-built one, but I highly suggest paying 110, picking yourselves up one of these. I mean, look, a Nemesis is retail like 90, 100 bucks. This is, this is 10, 20 bucks more. And then you pay shipping and then, and you put it together. I recommend putting it together rather than getting one pre-built uh, because that way you get to kind of understand the blast, the way it functions, the way it works. So when you have to take it apart to do maintenance and things like that, it's, it's, you, you get it. You understand how things work. And I just, I love the ability to swap out springs. I have a, a spring that he, that Captain Slug, I believe, has pre or recently added to the shop. It's the 788 spring, uh, and this gets between 120 to 140 or 150 FPS, which is great for some of the, like, super stock games where you don't want to, you know, be blasting kids with, you know, 200 FPS, which is, you know, so it allows you to have that flexibility and that control, and it just, best blast from 2017. Best blaster to come out in 2017. I, I firmly stand behind that. It may not be Nerf branded, but it is the best Nerf blaster to come out in 2017. And I think, I think I've said that enough. I think I've gone over uh, almost everything. Again, I could sit here and talk about how much I love this blaster for a whole lot longer, but I think I got the point across. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Caliburn. Uh, have you, do you have one? Have you played against one? Have you seen one on the field? What do you think of the way they look, the way they function, the way they continue to evolve? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below. I will, of course, leave a link to Captain Slug's Etsy page for the Caliburn so you can see all the cool stuff he has available there. Go check it out. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.